Why do they never go in for me? Hello everyone, back again. Yes, I've got a vinyl watch for you. Aren't you happy? Yeah, well I am. When I picked these up, I was more than happy. So, um, this is a watch I picked up. I've talked about this. I've got a potential watch coming up that I was well chuffed with. Um, I picked the main bulk of this up within in two, no, in one batch from a now defunct charity shop, um, British Red Cross. And the other, there was one record, which I'm gonna show first, get that out of the way, which I um, showed sorry, which I picked up in a separate charity shop. I'm gonna show that one first. So this one is this. I was stoked to pick this up. Um, this is David Bowie. This is Never Let Me Down. Um, I picked up a David Bowie shop in a David Bowie record in a charity shop. I was so chuffed. Now I checked this out in the shop and I wasn't that happy with the condition of the vinyl it didn't look particularly great so I thought well what we'll do is I'll pick it up anyway the covers in pretty good Nick and I'll frame the cover of the records pants um, but it is surprisingly listenable now I'm really stoked to pick, pick this one up because my tape copy bit the dust probably I don't know uh, three or four months ago and I was well chuffed to pick this up. Um, I personally think this is possibly a far in best of his late, late 80s stuff. I mean, no, I don't think it, I don't think he was happy with this at all, which is why he um, retreated into the confines of Tin Machine to try and get himself back into a creative flow again. But I really like this this album. Um, yeah, I was so. Two pounds, two pounds it's cost me for a David Bowie record. I could not believe my luck with that one. So I was well chuffed. Right, and then I've been talking about a um, haul that I got from a British Red Cross shop, which um, is now not there anymore. I, the building's up for sale, so I presume they've, they've had to get out because of that. They're not, the covers are not in the greatest of Nick. They've obviously been stored in somewhere slightly damp, which is why I'm keeping them away from the rest of my records at the moment. I'm gonna use some bicarbonate soda on the covers, I think. Um, try and get, they've got a slight musty smell to them. Um, the records are brilliant. The records are in really good nick and they sound marvelous. But we've got a bit of a jazz hall to start with. Um, I, I couldn't believe I was pulling these out one after the other. So the first one I'm going to show, we'll show, oh, I'll just do them in order. So the first one I got is this one. So this is a definitive Charlie Parker, volume one, is Verve recordings in chronological order. So this is on Verve. Now, when John Downing came to visit me in the summer, I think we ended up talking about jazz records and a lot of people show jazz. And neither of us really, I think it's fair to say, John, but neither of us really know what we're talking about. Um, well, I certainly don't. I, I hesitate to talk about somebody else's knowledge. Um, but it said that basically, if we see Verve, Blue Note, then we just pick it up. And there's a Verve record. This sounds marvellous. I mean, the, the vinyl is so clean. It's just come off a tree. Um, unbelievably, this record didn't even have an inner when I picked it up. So now it does have an inner. Um, I've tried, I've glued glued part of it back together, but it it needs a lot more weight on it on the cover. It's got a, no, it's not too bad. Oh, here we go. My usual problem. Right there we go. Um, so this sounds brilliant. So this is recordings from. 1948, 1949, it's got a brilliant version of Summertime, which is probably my favourite standard song. You know, those standards that everybody sort of covers. Um, Neil Hefty plays with Neil Hefty's orchestra on this. It sounds glorious, it sounds absolutely glorious. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, this seems to be a German, I think this is a German 
copy. Not entirely sure, but it's fantastic. So that's that one. I also picked up, now I've been looking for records by this guy for ages. I've lost out in auctions on eBay. Um, but this is Jimmy Smith's greatest hits. Um, I think there's a bit more damage to this cover. Here we go, sniffing vinyl records. This is what it's come down to. It doesn't smell too bad now, so they're starting to lose their mustiness. But it's a double album. You can see where there's been some kind of damage of water. There, there's been water damage of some kind. But I cleaned this up a bit. I mean, it's not perfect, but the records are glorious. On Blue Note. Um, so I think this is an original issue. Absolutely clean, the records. Whoever had these must have had them in a garage or something because the the records are in such good condition. Obviously the top of the records and then they must have got dumped somewhere. So there's the other one on that lovely blue note label. I maybe my pick of the bunch. I really like this. I've enjoyed this listening to this. This is a brilliant album, so love this. Fantastic to have one of those. Doesn't stop there. I pulled out this as well, Coltrane Jazz. So I've got four of the great, great probably jazz artists. Well, Jimmy Smith, would he be blues, jazz? I don't know. Um, so this is the album he released after Giant Steps. I don't think this is an original. I think this is a very early reissue. I think I've looked up, I've lo I'm sure I looked up the not pressing numbers on this. Here we go on that green and blue Atlantic. And I think it's possibly one or two years later than the um, original pressing. I have to be careful with this one because it's a bit of an awkward sleeve. And you know what I'm like with awkward sleeves. Um, oh dear, there we go. I'm going to take it out and do that later. You can see, yeah, it's not fantastic. It smells going just because it's so dry in here, which is good. But this is a fantastic record. I've just finished playing this before I started recording. Things, there's a track called Harmonic. I just love that. Um, I mean, I don't know whether it's hard bob or bob or whatever the heck. I just know it sounds good. And I was really chuffed to get it. I think this is a related issue because they've got the catalogue. I don't know whether that was a standard thing. If I'm gonna go put this back in, am I gonna get it this time? There we go, we're in. But yeah, Coltrane Jazz, that's a fantastic record. Didn't stop there because then I picked up this. Yeah, the smell's going definitely, it's way better. I might do it with some bicarb anyway, but we got we got Empyrean Isles by Herbie Hancock. Um, I guess the main track on here is Cantaloupe Island, which I've heard sampled on, now was it, We Three? when they sold a load of Blue Note and other stuff, jazz records, to make their hip hop album. Again on Blue Note, it's a stereo copy, which you can see there. This is glorious, absolutely glorious. Um, only four tracks, but they are brilliant stuff. I mean, if all jazz sounded like this, I would just be so into it. Um, yeah. Fantastic stuff. Again, there's a little bit of damage here, but what a record to find for two pounds. All of these were two quid. I was just going, whoa, I'll have that and I'll have that and I'll have that. I was in my, it was just wonderful. Wee. Um, <coughs> then I got, right, we'll do those two next. So I also got an Oscar Peterson album. So this is a load of tracks that he recorded in a private session for, now it's got sleeve notes in here, uh, Hans George Brunner Schwer in Germany. And they recorded, I think they've all been released. I think they were released on a box set as well, but this is volume one. This is Action, fantastic piano playing. 
fantastic stuff um, on the BASF MPS label. There's that one. Beautifully recorded, sounds fantastic. Um, it's got liner notes in German and um, English, which is quite a nice read. Yeah, absolutely fantastic record. I then also picked up, now I already had this, but I picked up another copy because it is such a good record and I thought I'll see which one's best and then gift this on somewhere. I don't know where yet, but we'll sort that out. So this is Hello Herbie. So this is um, Oscar Peterson Trio with Herb Ellis. This is another glorious sounding record. I haven't actually played this copy yet, so I don't know which one I'm going to keep, but it, it, it's another glorious record. Fantastic. Again with uh, German and English notes. Fantastic. That is a fantastic record. I think John Bellamy really rates the sound of this one. I think it's John Bellamy. I'm sure somebody told me it was him. But this is a fantastic record. Right, so that's the end of the jazz hall. Now also, I found I picked up a few other things in the same at the same time because I was just I went, I went trigger happy, I went whoa, um, and I thought well, this looked interesting, and it's it's not an a common record. So this is by a band called Between, and this is Hesse Between Music. So this is reading. This is a bit of a hard listen, to be honest. This is a reading um, of extracts from Hermann Hesse's work. Uh, from things like Peter Cummins and uh, where else is he from? I'm sure there's some from Siddhartha as well and other stuff. Um, all kinds of readings in German, so I can't I can't make head on tail of it. Um, with kind of um, some kind of crowd rocky progressive backing uh, uses all kinds of Indian music. It's kind of quite experimental on EMI, red EMI label there, which I think is a classical label, isn't it? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know how often I would actually listen to this, but I was just, my, my interest was piqued by this. There's the text of what, I think that's actually what the quotes of, they are, all in German. So, brilliant if you're a German speaker, which unfortunately I'm not. But it's an interesting lesson. I can't really complain about it. And I think not that common a record to find, especially in Devon. So, there we go. That's back in safely. So that's Hesse Between Music. I then picked up a few more common things. So I got this Ray Charles special, um, which I think is, it seems to be, yeah, it's an Italian compilation um, released on EMI, the stateside. Fantastic version of Yesterday, pretty good version of Eleanor Rigby. George on my mind by, by Ray Charles is amazing. Uh, things like Unchain My Heart, can't stop loving you. There's some fantastic songs on there on stateside. Um, Giri al minuto. So it's tiny and pressing. Sounds great. So I was really happy to pick that one up as well. Again, a couple of quid. Can't go wrong. <coughs> and then the final two things. Um, I picked up a couple of share records. So the first one I got is this one. So this is a French copy of uh, Sunny. Up, up, is it their first album or is it a cover? Is it a mm. compilation? I'm not entirely sure. I think I've looked it up and I've forgotten again. So this is released on the back of I Got You Babe. Um, load of covers here. You've got things like Then He Kissed Me, uh, Unchained Melodies on here. Um, let it be me. You've really got a hold on me. There's a couple. There's a couple of Sonny Bono originals, apart from I Got You, Babe. But 
I'm gonna, of course I'm gonna pick up that. Not the greatest shape, the vinyl. It's a bit crackly in places. Um, there was a skip, but I managed to get rid of that through cleaning. So maybe it just needs another clean. Um, I'm gonna try and get this out, but this one's a bit of a problem. Hang on, there we go, loosen it up. So it's on Atco, and it's Diane Coot who originally owned this. Um, so it's just nice to have that, and a, and a French copy to boot. Can I get it back in? Mm, kind of, I think. Oh no, there we go, we're in. Right, obviously practicing through the years has helped me. And then I got this as well, which I think is another, yeah, it is another French. So this is actually a version mm -hmm. of Cher's third album called Cher. I think side A or face one, face un, as it would be, I guess, is the same as the American version. But the second side is completely different. So it's got it, it's got a original version of Bang Bang on it. It's got a version of Paul Simon's Homeward Pat Bound. It's got Dylan's I Want You on it. It's got Alfie, which I think was a hit, minor hit for her. Not sure. And it's on the oh, it's a bit of a ropey inner safe. I should really replace this and find one that fits. So on privilege. So it's the I think Polydor International Privilege is the actual label. So there's that one, which is a bit of an unusual one. But yeah, I was again it's crackly, but I kind it kind of adds to kind of adds to the atmosphere of this record. I don't know why. I'm quite happy to hear the crackles on this one. Yeah, originally, original recording by Imperial Records in California. So there we go. Around, I do believe around dozen. Around dozen, does that make sense? I don't know. But a dozen records, I think. Maybe was it 13, 12? Oh, well, who knows? Is it a baker's dozen? I haven't counted. So there we go. A little bit of share to round this off. Right, so hopefully you've enjoyed that little haul through. Um, I've certainly enjoyed listening to them. Those jazz records sound sublime. They really do. Absolutely sublime. So, I'll be back again soon with another video. Hope you tune in again. And for now, I hope everybody takes care. Hope everybody stays healthy. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.